Welcome, friends. Welcome back to Sunday Morning in the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of the Lorraine Cooking Cookbook. And it's not a crazy recipe. It's a pot roast. And I chose this recipe for two reasons. One, I really wanted to have a pot roast for dinner tonight. And the second is this cookbook. Um, this is... This is one of those cookbooks that sort of uh, shows you a turning point in the history of kitchens in North America, uh, kitchens in general. So this is the sixth printing from 1928. Um, the first printing was in 1924. And I'm going to read you a little bit from the preface to sort of give you an idea of what this cookbook is all about. This book has been written and published expressly for users of gas ranges equipped with the Lorraine oven heat regulator. It is undoubtedly the first cookbook devoted exclusively to time and temperature oven cooking. That is Lorraine cooking. This is the method sponsored by the American Stove Company following the invention of the Lorraine oven heat regulator. So the Lorraine oven heat regulator was the first time in history that you could set the temperature on your oven. You could set the temperature of your oven to 350 degrees, it would heat to 350 degrees, and it would hold it at 350 degrees. And that's something that right now in 2019 um, sounds ridiculously simple, especially since there's ovens at this point connected to Wi-Fi um, that you can regulate from your cell phone. The whole idea that 1924 to 1928 was the beginning of this process um, just seems completely wacky, to me anyway. Uh, you would have thought that that would have happened earlier, but it didn't. And even in 1928, when this book was published, um, I'm sure that there were a lot of people that still didn't have an oven um, that was gas or electric. They were probably still cooking with wood or coal, uh, which is in of itself kind of crazy as well. So into this pot, uh, the first ingredient is it calls for some meat fat. So I have lard that I rendered from the pig in the Cutting Up the Pig series. And next is this piece of beef. And so I'm just going to salt and pepper and flour on both sides, and then we're going to fry it off and just give it a little bit of browning. Now we're just looking for a little bit of browning on the outside of the meat and spin it to get all sides. And you're going to get a little bit of fond in the bottom and that's what we're looking for. Now this recipe says to put a rack in the bottom of your kettle. Um, and by kettle they mean Dutch oven probably, more than likely. And a lot of new Dutch ovens like this uh, enameled one don't come with a rack that goes in the bottom. And so in some of my older bare metal ones um, there's this little trivet or rack tiny little feet and you put it in the bottom and it just holds the piece of meat up off of the bottom so that the liquid can circulate all the way around it and I find that you get a much better cook with that. So I put that in the bottom and then I'm going to put the meat back in. Now next it calls for some pretty basic vegetables um, so some carrots and you just nestle them around the outside. Celery as well same sort of thing just put it around and onions and just get the onions in wherever you can. Just get the last of those in. It also calls for parsley. Um, and so this is, a, this is a very basic pot roast recipe. Um, you're covering most of the flavor basics with this. And for a pot roast, it really doesn't need to be that complicated. I mean, you can go very easily because you're supposed to taste the roast. The meat is the star of this dish. Next in, um, a little bit more salt and pepper and just kind of sprinkle that all over the top. It also asks for tomatoes. So these are our home canned tomatoes from our own garden. Asks for about a cup, which is half a jar. So I'm going to put that in and just sort of pour that around the outside. Um, close enough. Maybe a little too much. I don't think that's really going to matter all that much. Now, here's the secret to this recipe. You've preheated your oven to the right temperature. You just stick this pot into the oven and you forget about it. You don't have to worry about stoking the fire, adding more wood, adding more coal. You don't have to worry if it's too hot or too cool. And for the first time in history, you can bake according to time and temperature, which was a huge leap forward. 
So we're going to give this a few hours and we'll come back and have a pot roast. Ooh, pot roast. Hey, girls. So <laughs> that makes me giggle because, of course, legend has it and the folklore of Glenn from Glenn's mom says that he was 10 years old and he went downstairs and made a pot roast when she was sick one day. I, that is the legend. It is the first full family meal that I ever cooked <laughs> and I was, I was probably 10. I probably was 10. Um, not far off. So, I mean, a pot roast. It's a, kind of a bit of a classic. It is, it is a family classic. classic. Um, so a little bit at the end of this, I took the liquid in the pot that was left in the pot. I made a little bit of a slurry of flour and water and I made a, a gravy, some gravy. Uh, and, and it's a very basic pot roast. It, it really is a very basic pot roast, but I think that well, you threw in the onions that always adds flavor. Yeah. And I think really this one, this video really is more about the story of the very first temperature control. And how, you know, in 1928, this was a brand new thing. So it actually says like a degree? Like yeah. It's, wow. So it tells versus you, a slow oven or, versus, a, or a good oven or a fast oven. They claim that this is the very first cookbook that gives you a temperature and a time for every recipe. Giant leap forward. But, well, and, but, and, but then you notice yet, in, I, the, in, the, in the books that we've got from the 30s and 40s, um, you know, right up until after World War II, a lot of our recipe books are still saying slow oven. Because people still had wood ovens. Still had I wood mean, ovens or coal-fired ovens, yeah. My Mr. Hollering cooked on a wood stove. I had friends that I went to school with that their, parent, their mother still yeah. cooked on a wood stove. I heard a documentary on the CBC radio mm -hmm. about electricity in Ontario. And a lot of farmer rural yeah. areas didn't have electricity until the 1970s. Well, we had it before then, but yeah. But but still, so, you know, they yeah. resisted the change. And so, you know, even in my lifetime, there would have been people that this was a foreign idea. Slow but yeah. the other thing I find interesting, though, is that with this addition of this knowledge into this, that other knowledge is lost, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of interesting how that works. It's kind of like our inability to know anybody's phone number now because you don't need to know it. You don't need to know it, right? And, and so this, this it, that's an interesting point because this does start that now cycle of nobody can just look at a recipe and say, I'm going to shove it in the oven at a moderate temperature and it's going to maybe take about this amount of time because now you need to be told exactly because we've lost the skill. Of just knowing when it's done. Of intuition. I guess, mm -hmm. is that intuition? We've, we've lost that, that intuition of, of how to cook and, and what to expect as something cooks. But that being said, I don't know if you cook a lot. I bake a lot. I know by smell in the house when, when it's done. It's like, yeah. oh, and oh, those, those should be done. I, that smells like it's done. And, you know, you walk over or at and, least it, I and there's like a minute check. left. I should go check it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, very basic pot roast. I mean, you can do this up as, as I normally put a little bit of... Uh, horseradish? Horseradish, uh, instant coffee, and Marmite in mine. Because that really brings those base notes in. And we've got three or four really good pot roast recipes on the channel, so I will link to those below. Um, and this is a great starting point. I mean, the meat is nice. The vegetables are nice. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.